Greetings, world, and welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit. My name is Dorina Shine. I'm a doctor in leadership, and I run a nonprofit in the Youngstown, Ohio area. Welcome all those who are far away, and welcome especially my Youngstown, Ohio connections. Thank you so much for being here. All right, so I want to let you know what's going on at the Youngstown Community Center, May 13th, 2023, from 11 to 4. We will be doing a shout out to Mothers of YCC. This is going to be a luncheon for Mothers Daughters uh, to come out and have a great time and inspire other people to realize that even though you know, their mothers may have passed on. They may not have that connection with mothers. You never know who you're going to inspire, who you're going to impress. So the cost is $10. If you are SVP by May the 8th, you will be guaranteed a spot. We're only uh, looking to have about maybe 12 to 15 people at the most. Okay. So give us a call 330 956 zero five one one. All right, here we go. Here we go. So today, you know, one thing I want to share is the right people will come into our lives at the right time when we strategize our nonprofit work. When we get to the basic fundamentals of who we are in our nonprofit, our people will show up. I would like to give a shout out internationally to our Contacts from Nigeria, Ghana, Africa, Ecuador, and Guatemala. Welcome to the United States of America. And, you know, we can be who we are, where we are. And that's what I want to talk about. The right people may come outside of the individuals we're most comfortable with being around. Okay, when you have uh, communication barriers, it makes it difficult sometimes. However, when you connect to the right people, no matter their dialect, no matter their ethnicity, you will begin to build a loyal relationship that helps the communication effectively, where everybody understands. It's like intuitive. You know, um, you begin to just know that you're okay with this individual and it's easier to connect. It's easier to communicate. Mm -hmm. So shout out to my new people, the right people who came to the right places to play the right roles. So the Youngstown Community Center is a nonprofit agency here in Youngstown, Ohio, specializing in the in multifaceted, uh, multifaceted programs for youth, young adult, and senior population. Uh, we do events, we do nonprofit uh, programming, adult day service, we do um, business development, we do COVID talks and empowerment. Um, we have meditation. We have a lot of things going on. So if you're interested, just schedule a tour to come in and get in where you fit in, okay? Because we're growing daily, and I'm so grateful for that. So getting the right people in the right roles is what we want to talk about as a nonprofit today. I've had employees since ooh, years ago, years, years, years. And many of them, I realized, were not employees. They were far greater than employees. They were independent contractors. These are individuals who know their skill, know their craft, and can shine at the time when they need to the most. You know, when producing a brand, whether it's for profit or nonprofit, I tell all my uh, clients, as a consultant, a business consultant, you have to create your own brand because your passion, I won't be able to do your passion the way you would want to do it because why? It's not my passion. <laughs> it's not my passion. 
My passion is building businesses. My passion is empowering and motivating people to do what they need to do. My passion is to create the platform and the investment and the investors and the housing and all of that that comes with my passion. So I'm going to do it to the best of my ability, 100%. So you may have people who may wonder, well, how did I get here? I got here by putting my foot forward every step of the way since I can remember. I mean, since I was younger, I've always fought for the underdog. That's why, you know, on this channel, I share this channel with another uh, national situation that I feel is um, blatantly um, disrespected. So in that, that's what I do. I fight. I'm a fighter. Sagittarians fight just because, you know what I mean? It has to be a reason. So they fight, okay? So back to getting the right people in the right places. Those roles will come to you immediately, God will assist in making sure that the individuals that you need serviced comes right to you. You may have some that have to teach you how to become stronger, how to stand your ground, how to organize and draft your your plans. But when that time comes and everything is in alignment, see, we can't be given the whole blueprint at the beginning because we won't learn the passion behind why we're doing what we're doing. Now, if it's just about money, then you're, you're going to have a serious problem because there's not a, a lot of money in nonprofit work. There's not a lot of money in some for-profit businesses that consult and do things for others, okay? So you better figure it out. And then there's not a lot of uh, uh, support at the very beginning. So you better figure out how you're going to feed yourself while you're going through your process. And it may be a five to 10 year wait. So you better know that your passion is what it is you're really, really, truly, truly trying to do. Okay, so the employer generally gets the employees he deserves. According to Walter Gilby, 18th century English entrepreneur, Now, I'm not going to say the employer. I'm going to say the independent business consultant generally gets the independent contractors he or she deserves. Okay, so I've managed many teams, big and small, because I've been uh, over the uh, organization under the Youngstown Police Department, the Mahoning Public Library, the Youngstown uh, Youngstown State University. I mean, these are big teams, okay? I've been there and I've learned lessons that typically most would not learn unless they were under the friction and the stress of the tower moment. The the you know, time where you have to realize that you don't have all the answers, sit down, shut up and listen. Okay, period, point blank, sit down, shut up, listen, learn something and apply it to your life. So there is no way around it. (laughs) So sometimes the wrong people do come into the roles that we expect to be um, productive. And they sometimes show us who they are as they come as a team leader. But pay attention to the morals, the actions, the morals and the intuition is not going to lie. A team is only as strong as its weakest link. So if you have somebody coming in trying to sabotage your business before you even get it up and running, you better know that that's the wrong person in that role and to move them immediately. Do not worry about the process of hiring, firing, what you have to worry about as far as legal ramifications go, because the intuition is just going to lead you, you know, put your wordings together to where you're able to say specifically, I'm going to give you a, um, a time where you can prove yourself, okay? And in that time frame, you make the decision what you're going to do. And you don't, you don't hold no bar, hold no bar. 
Do you know if you feel in your heart that this person is not a good fit for you? If you feel in your heart that there's too much drama and chaos with this ind individual, independent contractor, employer, volunteer, staff member, board member, you remove them because the goal is to stay focused on your mission, period, point blank. Um, so when you come across these situations, put the right people in the roles before a weak link becomes part of your organization. The right people have those leadership skills you're looking for. Okay. A lot of times you can, um, just tell them what you're looking for. Tell them what your expectations are of them. Put it in writing, get you a handbook and you read that handbook consistently so you can learn your process as a leader. This is what they taught um, in leadership class, that uh, there are different practices for different people. And no matter what person comes to you, whether they're narcissistic, whether they're uh, intimidating, whether they're uh, um, just a regular casual individual, you can train them to be who you want them to be in your, in your nonprofit or your for-profit company. You have the wrong people in the wrong roles. Be compassionate. But people are going to hear what they want to hear regardless because auditory learners have learned to manipulate what's being said. So if they want to keep chaos going, they're going to hear things in a derogatory type way. What we have to do at that point is just be blunt, be, uh, as my counselor says, go right to the handbook. You will not have a discussion. You will not have a conflict. You will not, you will have straight resolution and clarity and transparency. When you have things written and you can say, go back to uh, page four of your handbook, paragraph number four. Thank you, Corey. <laughs> Go back to that, okay, and reread it and then get back to me. You will learn that you will have less conflict and animosity within the process of your nonprofit or for-profit company, okay? It's going to be a challenge trying to find the right person because a lot of people can be decoys. A lot of people can just come into your establishment just to learn how you do what you do. They're really not there to genuinely and truly do what we expect them to do as an independent contractor or employee or a volunteer, or they, you know, everybody has their agendas, but the majority of the right people are going to have the agenda in a good way that knows the mission and the vision and the purpose behind the organization. So they're going to align with it. Okay. They are, they're going to align with it. Um, out of 50 people, to find the right person, you may have to do um, applications. You know, I, I have now started and ventured onto a new path in my career, and this is something that was very unexpected. It was something that I <laughs> could not have seen coming, but that's what happens. When we are aligned with what our mission is, new things are given to us daily, and it's how we project that new thing in our lives, right? So as this new thing comes to me, I have to now put myself in a position to recognize what is best for everyone involved. And that's what leaders do. Leaders do that phenomenally. So, so out of 50 candidates, I have to um, look at the skill set experience of the person, how motivated that person is. See, people can come in with all kinds of motivation. I've seen it happen. I've seen the most motivated person give up in less than a week. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of work involved in running your own business. There's a lot of work involved in running your own empowerment source. There is a lot of... Mm, self-confidence that that is needed in order to make sure that you independently can pay for all your bills from your creative thought 
because most people are not engineered that way. Most people are not trained today in that way. That's why I'm so grateful for the trade school at Shopping Career Center when I went to high school because it taught me food service. And that's the very thing that I run out of the nonprofit Youngstown Community Center. That's why when I when I take pictures of my kitchen, when people come in and they see the kitchen, they are flabbergasted by the fact of the cleanliness that comes in that kitchen. Why? Because I've been trained correctly on how to do what I need to do. I've been updated by the health department. I've been certified through commercial kitchen um, certification. I have staff members and volunteers and specialists who have certification in safe serve, um, you know, point of contact as the person in charge and safe serve certified. So there is a lot of things that you have to do. Certification, certification, certification. So if you're not one who's willing to get into a class and take it and learn and really not just wing it, just to do it, just to say, oh, okay, I got this certification, but to really and truly motivate yourself to do this, um, that makes you a candidate. You have to be that type of candidate. If you are that type of person, you're going to get certified. You're just going to do it. If you find yourself settling and you haven't found the right person, and oftentimes the right person can and should be more skilled than you are for the role. So I may not be as skilled as an independent contractor to come in and create a um, passionate idea of something other than what I'm doing. But this person is. So my, my goal is to align them at the level in which I am, um, giving them the opportunity to have the self-confidence to not just stay there, but elevate, elevate, elevate. And I mean, strive to elevate, you know, not for me, but for them, you know, um, whether you are a for-profit company who is run uh, based on uh, gender status, okay? Say if you're more in a masculine energy um, career, then you as a female better have a tough skin because there's going to be some things that, you know, I was um, talking to a, a trucker. Um, she's a female. And she told me that what she does at her business, which is very lucrative. So if anyone's looking for uh, employment outside of their location and they can travel, um, this is a good position for you. So she's a assistant to truckers. So when they're getting ready to make turns, so she follows them, okay? When they're getting ready to make wide truckload turns, she cuts off the freeway um, entrance so people will see not to go around the truckers as they're, you know, turning. So it's a safety precaution measure making over $25 to $30 an hour. I was about to do it. I really was <laughs> because I love to travel. I love to, you know, look at the scenes and different things like that. But my passion called me to stay where I'm at. So anyway, she was the right person for that role. And oftentimes the right person can and will be more skilled than the role in which others play. Strategic leadership, okay, is about getting people to believe in themselves and knowing that the roles in which they encounter and encompass, they're in their lane. Because guess what? If you're riding on the freeway and you you have the left lane, the middle lane, and the right lane, okay? And you're just riding around and doing whatever you want to do in that lane, okay? You're, you're, you're freestyling, you know, you got your Dodge Charger and you zoom, zoom, zooming, zooming around, right? If you don't stay in your lane, you're going to cause a lot of accidents. The same thing that happens in nonprofit and for-profit and sole proprietors and even volunteer programs. If you don't know what you're doing and you don't allow yourself that room to be assisted, then you're going to get into someone's lane and you're not going to know what to do. 
it's very good to throw a title on your name, but if you don't understand what that title represents, and if you don't understand the job description behind that, you can fake it till you make it all day, but you will still be found out that this is not the role that you are most connected to. Why? Because each of these roles must come with responsibilities. Okay. Make people accountable. Make them understand what you expect out of your objective. Your objective is to constitute a clear, transparent, precise mission, vision, and purpose. And anyone that is not a part of that is not aligned with the company and need not be there. Because other than that, they're either a distraction or they are a, a, a they're planted there to learn something, to go and take back to someone else, or they're just in the way. <laughs> That's it. And yes, it's a cruel world in business and it is a cutthroat business um, for some because they want to come in and they want to take over what has been already established and how dare them think that life works that way that's narcissism all the way mm -hmm. now as a business leader i do eventually if you go into my business consultation courses you are going to tap into the paranoid leader um paranoia is very um it's very impressive and it's instructional when it comes to business, because the intuition is the very thing that creates um, the storyline for you. And if you're honest and true to yourself, you're already going to feel what's going on. If you feel what's going on, then you have to take action. You can't ignore it. Okay. And so I wouldn't call it paranoia to the extent of extreme um, manic paranoia, but I would call it the intrinsic value in which you hold that guarantees that you're going to take care of yourself, that guarantees that you're going to look around and you're going to see who's for you and who's not for you in the form of business. And that's how you create the right role for the individual that is in your camp. Okay. The objectives and the goals, they're, they're very clear. And that's all you need. That's all you need. And then empowering the individuals to go out there. No, not micromanage, but define exactly what is needed. How can someone go into a establishment and as an independent contractor, knowing nothing about the establishment in and of itself? And so as you grow, especially me as a leader, as my independent contractors grow within the Youngstown Community Center and the business development behind what Scales to Success LLC does here in Youngstown, Ohio, you are going to be given certain instructions and they're going to be very clear, transparent, and precise. However, you're not going to come in and do it your way. There's a certain protocol. There's a certain uh, um, uh, leadership role and guideline that everyone must follow when they walk into that facility. So get that understood. Working for YCC, Scales to Success, Operation Hope 22, um, and now my new um, project, that entails training. And I don't care how defined you are in your leadership, it is what is expected from leaders under our title under our profit and for-profit and non-profit agencies. Because in the end, when the government says, I have to shut you down because A, B, and C, I can't say, well, my independent contractor was the one that did it. Oh, absolutely not. You know, you should have trained them. Mm -hmm. Now, don't take this personal, but train a child in the way that they should go. And when they're older, they won't depart from it. I'm not calling anyone um, who is an, an adult a child, but what I am saying is when there's certain guidelines and rules that come into the establishment, you must follow them, period. Because if not, you become, you make the organization become the weakest link. 
And how can we be successful being a weak link? So those are things that we need to manifest as leaders, providing that support and making sure that we're real in the support for the success, the mentorship. Some people want mentorship, but they don't know how to accept and appreciate the process. Saying I want mentorship is not the same as sitting down, listening, sitting down, shutting up, learning, putting on the acknowledgement of what is now, not what has been done in the past. Captain Johnson is very, very aware at the YCC when she states, don't worry about the past. The past is something you can't change. You can't go back there. You can't change it back there. You can change it today. So work with the leaders, work in the role of advice and strategy and striving that most people have to struggle to do, acknowledge that because that's where the independent growth is going to occur in anyone's life. Whether you are a parent running your household, whether you are a new entrepreneur trying to just, you know, get your feet wet and you want to see, do I have what it takes? And realize it's not a one week crash course. No, this is a lifelong process. That's why I continue to keep finding these gems and these goals and these objectives and these core, these courses that I put together for myself. Why? Because nothing new is under the sun. Okay. But it's the process that makes it new in our lives when we've never experienced it. But there's always someone who has. And in that someone who has, I want to meet that someone. Because if I'm the only smartest person in my camp, then I can't grow any further. Shout out to David Cohen. (laughs) Shout out to Azusa Refuge Foundation. Shout out to People Helping People. Shout out to Women Empowerment Programs in Ghana, Africa. Because without you guys, I would not be able to know all the guidelines and the rules that come with our nonprofits plus corporations. This is a real, true, uh, uh, unique, creative process. And it's a fun process, but you have to earn it. You can't be just born in it. And now it's yours. No, there is no entitlement. There ain't no entitlement to this thing. I thought it was. I remember In college, Professor Greaves, an an attorney at Youngstown State University, I followed her. We had an essay to do. I followed this professor to the bathroom and I got my point across because how can you give me a B when this is my opinion of what you wanted to know about? That's what an essay is all about. So in her guidelines, she was not clear and precise about how she was determining my grade versus how I was putting leadership into my essay from my own experience. Her experience is not my experience. So as I follow this woman into the bathroom, she is like, oh my God, this lady is really still talking. So we're in one of those stall bathrooms. So I'm over there by the door, you know, giving her her privacy or whatever. But I'm telling her, you know, no, you cannot grade me like this. And it wasn't any bullying. It was just a factual manifestation of what it was that I understood from her instructions. And her instructions were just basically tell me what you feel about whatever it was. And I gave my, my uh, true, you know, I gave my introduction. I put my body in there. I put my conclusion in there. I did what the rules of the essay writing was supposed to do. However, it wasn't her point of view. She didn't like what I said about whatever it was. And so she dropped my grade to a B. No, no, no. I need my GPA to stay high. So you're going to have to fix this with me or you're going to have to help me understand 
what I did wrong or we're going to the provost. I, I, I don't play. And sure enough, you know, she understood and she did have to reevaluate. And I ended up with an A on that on that coursework work. Whereas when I was in algebra, when I was dealing with calculus and the quadratic equation, I was happy with a C because that was not my leadership role. That was my weakness. So in that, it was okay. A C felt like an A to me. So that's what I want to share with you guys. I thank you so much for being part of the Chronicles of a Nonprofit podcast. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And all of my Chronicles of a Nonprofit Uh, The pictures, the thumbnails will look exactly as what you see in front of you. So you won't get uh, misunderstood based on videos that do come out. Okay. I am definitely working on a, a public situation involving a legal, a legal appeal, um, So if you see anything other than this, just disregard if you're not interested in that information. But I am keeping all the podcasts on this one particular channel. And if you're interested in volunteering, becoming um, a staff member or introducing your independent idea, your business idea to the Youngstown Community Center, don't hesitate to give me a call. Um, Also... If you're looking for housing, don't hesitate to give me a call. And yeah, so we, we're, you know, this is just a great time. It's a great time in the world. It's a great time in the universe. You know, the downloads that are coming to the planet is more or less exposing those people who are not part of the process towards leadership. And they're just calling them out. So when you know better, you do better or you keep skip to the loop and keep doing what you do. All right. As always, stay consistent. Thank you so much for being here. God bless you. I love you all. And we'll see you next time.